All right, I get excited about plays like like this, and um, you're gonna when you watch the play, you're gonna say, "Wait, uh, this is just like a like a it's like a six yard gain, like uh, it's a nothing six yard gain." Well, uh, the Cowboys, as you can see, there is no tight end here, and they have their three wide receivers with Ceedee Lamb in the slot, and he has the sombrero, right? So we know this. So the Dolphins must counter with a way to defend C.D. Lamb. And they're in some type of cover seven or cover six man under, and it ends up becoming some type of split coverage. But it's so perfectly orchestrated that I just had to show it to you. We're going to run it a little bit until we're set at the line and the Dolphins kind of give up some cues. Okay, we're not looking at the pass rush, by the way. We're waiting for them to set. And we're going to stop it right here. And it's right there, right at the snap. Kind of looks like it's confirmed man, right? Like, this looks like confirmed man. This is Cameron Good, by the way. It's a linebacker on CD Lamb. So you're like, whoa. Like, we're kind of defeated here. You're not. Because I'll tell you what they're doing. It's a middle of the field open defense. But you're going to have bodies inside and here are the rules for, for this defense and this coverage as they see it. Um, Deshaun Elliott knows he is the field side safety. Okay? So, Ramsey can carry his man to the sticks. And Elliott has him deep. And then Ramsey has all of this. He has flat responsibility. And he has the intermediate zone all the way up to the numbers. Okay. Cameron Good is passing off either side, but he wants to get some hands on CD Lamb, right? But he's passing him off, and he's either passing him off to the field side corner, which is going to be Jalen Ramsey, or he's passing him off through the zones that are manned by Duke Riley and David Long. Now, it's a little bit different on this side for the safety. He is allowed to drive on all of these crossers. Anything that comes here, and we're going to clean it up, okay? Anything that comes across his face, he can drive because play side corner is taking his man one-on-one, -on -one, all right? And since it's middle of the field open, you are essentially have you have two safeties that can drive or fill space while wow. you're going to have three underneath defenders so that's how you can play middle of the field open all right now i want you to watch this as i run it right here the orchestration and we're stopping it all of a sudden, leverage is a little bit different, right? Look at the leverage Ramsey's playing with. And uh, Deshaun Elliott's recognizing that CeeDee Lamb is not coming to his area, so they don't have to orchestrate their roll-up for the flat. So the play is coming play side, right? So look at the orchestration and the recognition from the safeties. As this play moves on. First you got good with the good hands play. And I want you to see what they ended up with. You're trusting Ramsey. Uh, Howard's already coming off of his man. Because the ball got delivered to the flat. But look at what CeeDee Lamb is facing here. He's facing a driving safety. A linebacker that's shadowing him underneath. And you still have support players right here. With a mindful eye of what was going on over here. But since they know that the play is coming play side, they have C.D. Lamb essentially completely bracketed. Uh, Duke is just a little little late in getting over. Like he should have been. Once he sees that the rush is actually, is actually going to flush Dak a little bit or he's going to flush him just outside of the pocket, I think it's probably a good idea to just get on this side of the hash. But what do you end up with? Well, CeeDee Lamb is absolutely covered. You have a driving safety. You got him underneath. You could even have Xavier Howard peel off 
possibly. But all that was left was the check down. And Dak took it correctly. This is good quarterback play. Now, you got the check down. What are you going to do? You protect those sticks. You protect it by tackling. Good job of getting down there. By the way, uh, Xavier Howard just missed that that tackle. But good job of orchestrating really, really good defense. Now let's watch the front. Uh, you got Hand, Raekwon, Christian Wilkins, and Big Mel on the outside. You have an over front. But uh, let's see what this pass rush it's essentially straight up pass rush. Christian Wilkins gets on Zach Martin's shoulder, and Zach Martin was not playing all that, you know, he didn't look healthy to me. But he does well to get Christian Wilkins down. Uh, pass rush was enough to where Dak Prescott had his clock going in his head, and he knew he didn't have CeeDee Lamb on the over so or the, the crosser. So he took the check down, and Miami came up and tackled that is high-level defense. All right, this is pretty fun. Dolphins are going to run crossbook power from their one-yard line. They're just trying to get out of the end zone, trying to get a little room. Successful play would be about six yards here, which is precisely what they get. And so what do they call for it? They call it crossbook. This is a, a play that's from the 1960s. Um, I'm not sure if they ran it too much in the 50s, but I know that it was a pretty popular play in high school down here in the 80s and 90s. But I'll explain all the variations you could have with this crossbuck play. First of all, I love this this formation. Uh, you're going to block down, okay? You're blocking down all across. And the crossbuck motion is going to come over here. You're going to put Julian Hill in motion, and he's going to hit. The backside. So where's the cross buck here? Well, you're going to run it in this tunnel right here. Right? So I'm going to draw it up for you. You're blocking down. Blocking down. Blocking down. Blocking down. Blocking down. And you got to hit the first level of defenders. You're bypassing Micah Parsons because you're running Julian Hill. across the formation while you're going to have a little counter step because if you could move these defenders just slightly, maybe a quarter, maybe a foot to the right, you're going to gain leverage on all these down blocks. So what you're doing is you're going to have Ingold do a counter step and then he's going to lead the play right here. All right, and I'm going to watch you. Uh, you can watch how this is run. You can see the block that they almost got and the blocks that they did get. And we're running it. Watch Engold with his uh, counter step. And watch most of where he follows him. It's on the left side of Tua, and he follows his initial hole. But we're going to bring it back, and we're going to stop it. If Julian Hill can seal his man, here's the lead that Ingold's getting. And here is the green grass that Mostert can run to. But we're going to, we're going to rewind it just a little bit to show you. There's Michael Parsons. He's being bypassed. They're blocking down. As you can see, here are all the block downs, right? Mazzy Smith is completely out of the play. They hit all these blocks. All the all of this is well orchestrated. They're trusting Toron Armstead to have Demarcus Lawrence one on one. And here's the play right here. Julie Hill can get this block. You're already running your, your counter cross buck in this place right here. And look at all that green grass. All you need is one lead block. But you got to hit this block. And I'll show you what happens. 
Good attempt. But doesn't get enough of them. So Ingold has to get them while he's leading into the hole. Still gets six yards because the offensive line down blocked so effectively. All right, here's a, a shot play. All right, play side, you're going to have Waddle running some type of little end cut right here while Mostert gets out into the flat. Um, Tua is going to send Ingold in motion. And he's just, just going to try to get wide enough to occupy DeBron Blanc just a little bit to give Tyreek a run right inside of the numbers, a free run right inside of the numbers while Durham Smythe is essentially the safety valve on a short in cut. Okay, on a short hook. Now, why wasn't this successful? Uh, a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, Robert Jones needed to cinch the inside leg of Kendall Lamb as he has Micah Parsons, right? So, ideally... You know, if Parsons tries to tr a speed rush, you know, Lamb has to ride him past the quarterback, right? Now let's clean this up, and let's talk about the pass rush a little bit. If he comes inside, they should have him doubled, right? Bull rush, got to have an anchor, okay? Because we want to get the shot play in. But let's talk about the shot play as it occurs, and we're going to run it. We're going to stop it a couple of times as it's being run. Now look at what happens with Deron Bland. See, it gets a little wide. And we're going to stop it. And as you can see, Tyreek has his free, free release. And he's coming downfield. This was enough. They were going to completely let Alec Ingold essentially wide open on the slat. Uh, in the in the flat, and then you know linebackers just gonna have to hurry out there. Uh, Tua could have had Ingold if he wanted to, but he wants, you know, he has bigger fish to fish to fry, so he wants Tyreek on this. We're gonna clean it up. We're running it, and then I'm gonna tell you an issue I have with it. Tua throws him right down the numbers, right? And one thing I would always encourage, especially guys that are as fast as Tyreek Kill, is this. We're gonna stop it. At a certain point, right here. Okay, once he had, once he stacks to Ron Bland, you want to give your quarterback a wide berth. You want to give him space to miss. And remember, Tua has considerations in mind. He has the safety. Okay, and he has all of this real estate to throw to. So it's a just miss. And nobody's really at fault, although I saw that Shannon Sharp and Chad Ochocinco were talking about once you stack the receiver, you give your quarterback a wide berth. You don't need to be running down the numbers. Uh, remember remember that from back here, remember Tua's over here, okay, getting hit by Michael Parsons, okay? From back here, he doesn't know the safety's out of the play. He thinks the safety has a shot at it if that ball is right here on the inside of the numbers. Tua will always throw this route on the outside of the numbers, okay? And that's precisely where he throws it. Now, is it just slightly off? Maybe it's a yard off? Maybe. But you kind of want to see your receiver, once he stacks the corner, you know, give your quarterback a wide berth to throw to. You know, get on the outside of the numbers. And this goes for 94 yards. Now, I'm going to show you the, the protection. Now, we're going to watch it, and then we're going to bring it back. Okay. We're going to stop it right here. Okay. It's pretty simple, all right? Michael goes wide. You got to ride him past the quarterback. He bulls rushes you. You need an anchor. Okay. Comes inside. You should have a double. Okay. What you can do is have him set you up, have nothing to do, and then you just don't wipe him out outside of the hash. Because the quarterback needs his pocket. Especially when you know you called a shot play here to Tyreek. To your number one guy. So we're going to run it. 
And by the way, it's important where Mazzy Smith is, okay? He's on the inside shoulder of Robert Jones. So he does have some consideration, okay? But we know Eichenberg realizes this is to his blind side. So Eichenberg realizes I'm probably going to help on here because, you know, the the field side, my guys should have leverage to either ride their guys out or do what Armstead does, which is he takes a jump, jump step to stone Lawrence into his face. So we're going to clean this up and I'm going to show you what happens here. Very nice job for Liam Meikenberg to engage. And Robert Jones now has little to do but protect Kendall Lamb's inside shoulder. He should be getting out here into his own kick slide. And that's not what he does. He's a little late. And Michael Parsons drives inside and gets the hit on Tua. And there's the play. Tua did throw him a little bit too far outside, but I still un, I still believe that that ball has to be right outside of the numbers right there once you stack the cornerback. Um, Tyreek just kept going in a straight line. He stacks him, gets a little bit out, gives him a, a little bit more of a wide berth, get, allows him some room to miss, and you have yourself a 94-yard touchdown. All right, this is Seed Lamb's touchdown. Okay. Ball is right here, play side. And we're kind of ignoring all these routes because it doesn't matter because the Dolphins are in zone coverage. We know what CeeDee Lamb is running. He's running crosser, right? And he's running it from the field side. They're going to put this man in motion. Right? Then release him while they have Ferguson in line. And they have a classic trips look, okay? to this side so this is going to look a little bit more different this is going to look a little bit more different once they put people in motion and now the coverage is going to change because pre-snap you have essentially quarters and it's essentially a cover six two man under which means your linebackers are going to take the tight end and the back. Man to man. Underneath. Okay? Now. Motion. Is going to screw up a little bit with the coverage here. And we're going to show it to you. We're running it. Look at this motion. I watched Xavier Howard. He's coming, he's coming in just a little bit. So. And we're going to stop it right here. So. So now the quarters coverage looks a little bit differently now, huh? Doesn't it? Too much space over here outside of the numbers. But Xavier Howard comes in. He has to understand he has to get a little bit deeper and keep the integrity of the coverage in case they run anybody across. So we're going to clean it. And we're going to show it until they move Pollard out. They move Pollard out, and we could already see what's happening to Griley. It's going to take him out into the flat. We're not watching the the pass rush here because the pass rush here is essentially they're slanting uh, left, and the Cowboys have it well picked up because they're, they're blocking right because they have this concept coming this way. So... As far as quarters, this is looking fine as of right now. Uh, Brandon Jones has to be mindful. He cannot pinch too far in. He has to understand, although he is protecting the field side, he, he has to be watching the field side. He has to be mindful of not giving up the integrity of the coverage since it's quarters, and he has to be hugging this hash pretty much at all costs. right? So what's happening here is that Due to the formation and the motion, Xavier Howard is left with not too much to do because he thinks that all of this stuff is happening over here, right? He's also reading, if you could see him, 
he is looking directly at Dak Prescott, and he sees where Dak is looking. So Xavier Howard's like, you know what? I'm protecting backside. I'm going to take Ferguson in, which means I'm going to give up my integrity, the integrity of the quarters coverage. We're going to clean this up. We're going to run it. And notice what he does. He's going to. Maybe he thought he was going to jump this, but he's essentially given up this. Now, this safety, which is Deshaun Elliott, has to have already diagnosed all this stuff, and he should be driving on everything that comes across the middle. But since it's coming across late, you kind of don't want to give up this much space, especially on a defense that is essentially middle of the field open. You don't want to play with that leveraged to the inside because it's going to allow for something like this. And notice, had you had kept the integrity of the quarters coverage, this man would be right here and this man would be somewhere around here and you could possibly tackle. But this was all defeated because leverage was wrong on this side of the field you needed to play them middle of the field close from the slot once you have trips so there are three mistakes in here Mo uh, not the least of which is incorrect leverage causes a free release inside where you can throw that little crosser he's catching it and he's gone. And this was just a combination of so many things that went wrong on this one play. Uh, also, not the least of which was the pass rush. They're slanting right. It's essentially a guess. Because they are on the play side. And there's nobody in the backfield. Although now that there is, you can see they're mindful of it. But Zach Sealer correctly diagnoses, and that ball is out quick. Leverage is wrong. Xavier Howard vacated his zone, and CeeDee Lamb is catching it on a free release, and that is a touchdown. Now, there's a mesh concept that's so well run. Um, you know, you're essentially going to run all these guys across formation, and that's the mesh, right? Cedric Wilson's going to come out right here, right? So that alone should be the play, right? N uh, no. What they're going to do is try to get a linebacker out of position by moving Mostert in here. And then he's going to go through the line and be part of the mesh concept parallel to Cedric Wilson. So you're going to have some type of orchestration that's like this. Cedric Wilson trailing. And for a defense that was trying to play middle of the field closed, you're essentially turning your back to where the play is going. This is a, a brilliant design. And I hope we see more of it. Now, uh, I want you to watch number one, which is, he's the mic here, okay? He's spotting him, and he gets caught in all that wash. There's your mesh concept. And to be honest with you, they could have thrown short if they wanted to, but he's so wide open that, you know, you could punt it to him and he'll score. Beautiful mesh concept. This is something that they should run more of. Great job by Cedric Wilson as well. Very well orchestrated. I like to watch um, good orchestration in the run game. And here they're doing something really, really interesting. Okay. They're blocking down. Blocking down. Block, blocking down. They bring Cedric Wilson around as some type of window dressing to try to gain just a little bit of leverage. Just a little bit of leverage. Okay. As... 
play side. Smythe is going to chip, release the second level as they're bringing front side cut off and running this play right off of the tackle to Ron Armstead. Now, you need to cave this in because you got to get this block in space. You're going to put Micah Parsons into a little bit of conflict. He's either going to have to stack and shed the tight end or he's going to have to shoot the gap. Now, he has to keep integrity because he has to set the edge, right? So you're banking on him being out here so you can run this, this front side block at him. And then you could run right inside of him. Okay? So we're going to run it so you could see the execution of this. As you can see, look at that block. By Alec Engover. And now he's out the gate. Uh, breaks the tackle right there. Mostert could go. The distance. Let's see it from the end zone view. And I want you to watch what Alec Engel does. And I'm going to draw it up for you so you can kind of see it. Okay, it's imperative that you move these people out of here. Because Durham Smythe is going to jab, step, block, release. Just to give Ingold enough time to get that lead right there. That lead block. And you're running right inside of it. So it's essentially off tackle. But it's so well orchestrated. It could have gone. All you need to do is just break a tackle. So you can see it and be mindful of what Armstead is doing right here. He's just moving his guy out of the way. And here comes the cutoff. I mean, the lead block on Micah Parsons, who was just bypassed by Durham Smythe. This is just beautiful orchestration. Look at that block by Ingold. Smythe is on curse. And now he's out the gate. And now it's about making a guy miss. Big game. You can see the orchestration again. Deron Bland does, does well to not get sucked up in, into that action. Because if not, uh, all of this might have been vacated out here. And Mostert could have scored. Now this is the Dolphins' uh, 52 look. Uh, this 52 front is... They, they should just outlaw this thing. Uh, it's just not unfair. It's just not fair to opposing offenses. They just can't be blocked. So you got Raekwon. You got Sealer. You got Chubb. You got Wilkins head up on the tackle. Uh, he's going to end up head up on the tackle. You're going to see it. And then you got Van Ginkle outside. Now, Dak Prescott's going to rec recognize this, so he's going to motion his back to be this side. And essentially, because he could see that they're essentially one-on-one -on, -one on the front side, right? On the play side. So, he's going to have his back for support if Van Ginkle comes. If not, and that has to be a split second decision. If not, he's going to release to the flat, right? Now, since you have two linebackers and you have a safety, and you're kind of showing like if you're in man, uh, although you can't play quarters out of this, you can't you can't switch into cover three. You could do a lot of different things here. Uh, this could be a cover six. It actually is consummate cover six as far as how you're align how you're lined up. So since you could do all those things, uh, the pre-snap look is kind of confusing for Dak. So he knows where his guys are at, and he knows he has Ferguson running a, a hitch. So the Dolphins are going to have one too many defenders to take on this tight end, right? So why not bring the extra man? And they do. They bring Duke Riley through the A gap and forced a hurried throw. We're running it. 
And here's where Dak is going to motion Pollard. You can see he's going to release. Van Ginkle goes with him. Hurried throw. The Dolphins are getting off the field. Now, if you look at the pass rush, this thing is just so unfair. <laughs> you know? Like, figure what you have going here. Not only do you have the numbers, okay? Because, remember, Duke's coming. So, since he is coming, you got one, two, three, four, five, six on the line of scrimmage. You're releasing Ferguson. So, you got five to block. Remember, they don't know that Van Ginkle is not coming. That Van Ginkle is selling a rush and then taking the flat. Right? So, if they slide the protection, Chubb is going to be one on one, right? But not only is it going to be one on one field side, but if you run a guy into the A gap, you have three rushing for two blockers as they slide over. And the pressure is going to come right from the inside, and the Cowboys are on their own goal line. This is good orchestration of a five man rush, and it also helps to see Christian Wilkins' rush on Terrence Steele. I want you to watch that. And we're running it. And very late, Duke comes into the A-gap. And Dak has to get rid of it. You got a linebacker bearing down on you on your own goal line. You're going to be inaccurate. Here's another well-orchestrated play. Now, this is the screen that essentially began to ice this game. You have Tyreek in motion. That's going to draw Jordan Lewis. On the way back... Jordan Lewis trips, right? And since it's confirmed man, and this is really well done by by Tua recognizing that it's man, okay, it's essentially just about getting one block. And if you get one block and you're catching the ball on a guy who's already out leveraged due to the motion, this stuff is elementary. But there's one other subtlety in this game, in this play. Uh, Michael Parsons is in a sprinter stance, so he's going to come off this edge. If you watch what Armstead does, he bobs his head as if he's going for a cut, which causes Micah to get a little lower, and he essentially just falls down, helping the play and creating this tunnel to run the play in. I uh, want you to watch this. Very savvy play by Teron Armstead. And I want you to watch Teron Armstead. First, you're going to watch Jordan Lewis. Okay, he's coming. He's coming with Tyreek. He's coming to Tyreek. He's coming back. And there's the there's the trip. And now he's completely lever out leveraged on this throw. We're going to run it. And I want you to watch Teron Armstead. You saw that? You saw that little bob of the head? That caused Micah Parsons to get lower. And he's essentially going right to the ground. And there's the tunnel created for Tyreek to get out the gate. Uh, you're going to be able to see Teron Armstead even better right here. I want you to watch Teron Armstead here. You know, it's always, uh, and we're going to run it right until, like this is a good sign. Like, it's hard not to start giggling if you're Teron Armstead, but you see Michael Parsons in a sprinter stance. Teron Armstead knows he's going to be able to use footwork or even a head bob, which he does. He oversets, bobs his head, and Michael Parsons dives inside, creating this tunnel for Tyreek to run through, which is all kinds of interesting. Look at, uh, I want you to watch Teron Armstead because he really does make this play. Uh, although, you know, Tyreek is number one. Tua getting rid of the ball very, very quickly is number two. But you saw that overset, bob of the head. There's the tunnel, and there's green grass. 
First down. And eventually, game. This is the play that ices the game. And Tua in the huddle, he's heard on hard knocks saying, this is on you guys on the left side. And it is. Because they're just running a simple trap play. It's going to go right in here. This is about a hat on a hat. And what they're going to do, and they get the right alignment for it as well. Teron Armstead has to have Micah Parsons. There is no backside cutoff here because you're running a trap. Uh, Teron Armstead has to have his man one-on-one, has to lock up Micah Parsons. There cannot be any pursuit down the line. Lester Cotton is pulling, and there's your trap action. Simple. That is as simple as a power run play as you can have. Simple gap gap scheme stuff. And I want you to see the orchestration of it. There it is. Lester Cotton does well just to get a hand on Demarcus Lawrence. That opens the hole. And that gets Jeff Wilson going down field. Uh, Very well done by Lester Cotton. Uh, I'm going to show you again here. Remember, it's Demarcus Lawrence that's coming off of that edge. Okay? So that's where the trap is running. And we're stopping it. Michael Parsons is essentially a non-factor in here. Okay. DeMarcus Lawrence is trying to get low in the hole because that's where you're running the trap play. Good block by Berrios on the edge. Here comes Lester Cotton to seal it. There's the hole to get that first down. And I want you to see Lester Cotton. Good block, and then disengages, so there is no penalty, and you're getting downhill, and that is the ball game, as Lester Cotton celebrates. Let's run it one more time. Let's look at Lester Cotton right here. Beat your chest, big man. <laughs> 